we have the diagram on the screen now now this is the diagram of a sphere you can consider this sphere as the earth the points at the top and bottom represent the two poles you can see the north pole where the pointer is right now and uh, the bottom most point you can see the south pole and exactly midway between them this dotted line which you see is the equator now on a sphere or on the surface of earth a great circle is a circle on a sphere or on the surface of earth whose plane passes through the center of the sphere the great circle has the same diameter as the diameter of the sphere itself the purple color circle which we see in the diagram is a great circle so you see this purple color circle which we have in the diagram is a great circle because its plane the plane of this purple circle passes through the center of the sphere the center of the sphere is represented by point c so we can see that the plane of this circle passes through the center of the sphere so this is a great circle now you can see the diameter or the radius of this great circle is going to be the same as the diameter and radius of the sphere they will be exactly the same now why is it called a great circle because this is the biggest diameter circle which we can draw or have on the surface of that particular sphere it is not possible to draw a circle having a diameter greater than this that should lie on the sphere so that is why it is called as a great circle now as we have seen the center of a great circle matches with the center of the sphere to give you an example of a great circle we have the equator on the surface of our so equator is a great circle the plane of the equator passes through the center of the earth as well as the center of the equator is the same as the center of earth it is the biggest diameter circle which we can draw on the surface of earth so equator is a great circle also like equator all the meridians running from north pole to the south pole all the meridians are great circles or you can say parts of great circle now a meridian and its anti meridian or inferior meridian combined together forms a complete great circle like say for example if you consider the greenwich meridian and the 180 degree meridian if you join them together it forms a complete great circle on the surface of the earth now we can only draw one and only one great circle passing from any two points on the surface of earth if you have two particular positions two particular points on the surface of a sphere or earth there is only one and one great circle which passes through them now there is one exception to this principle this statement this fundamental and that is if these points are diametrically opposite 180 degree east and west are all great circles and they are all passing from these two points that is the north pole and the south pole so two points which are diametrically opposite infinite number of great circles can pass through them and if we have two points or two positions which are not diametrically opposite there will be one and only one great circle which will pass from both those points
Okay, beta. So, uh, any doubt in what we have discussed up to here, beta? Any doubt coming to your mind? Please share with me now. So, what is the diametrically opposite? Ask again, beta. So, what is called this? Uh, you told me before the uh, diametrically opposite. I have more than two. Okay, 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 okay. Diametrically I opposite. Actually, yeah. I got it. Yes, Diametrically opposite points. Okay. If you pick up any point on a sphere, okay, any point, let us say you pick up north pole of the earth. Now, from the north pole, if you draw a line going up to the center of the earth, you can draw a line like that? Yes, sir. If you extend that line, wherever it goes and touches the sphere on the opposite side, that is called a diametrically opposite point. Means there are two points and there is a diameter in between them. That is diametrically opposite point. Is it clear now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Any more doubt up to here, beta? Sir, in this slide, which is being displayed, it's written that the purple circle is a great circle. Yeah, that's right. But its its center does not pass through the center of the earth. This okay. The purple is this one, beta. Uh, the pinkish one, the reddish tint. Pinkish one. Understood. I was mistaken with the above one. Understood, sir. That's that's blue. That's that's the blue one. The blue one is the small circle, and the pink one and is the this pink great one is circle. It? Okay, sir. Thank you. All right. Okay. So if you are comfortable, shall I move on to the next slide? Yes, I can move. Yes. Very good. Great. Now moving on to the concept of a small circle. A small circle is a circle on the surface of a sphere whose plane does not pass from the center of the sphere. Like say for example the blue color circle which we see in the diagram, this one, this is a small circle because you can see the plane of this particular circle does not pass from the center of the sphere which is at point C. So all these circles whose plane does not pass from the center of the sphere are called as small circles. The diameter or the radius of the small circle will be less than the diameter of the sphere. And the center of a small circle is not the center of the sphere. We know their centers are not matching. The centers of the blue uh, small circle is here at this particular point, whereas the center of the sphere or the earth is at point C here. Now, all the parallels of latitude except the equator are small circles. Whether it is 10 degrees, 20, 30, 40, 50 north or south, all these parallels on the surface of earth represent small circles because their plane does not pass from the center of earth and their radius is not equal to the radius of the earth and the center of these circles is not the same as the center of the earth. So any doubt up to here better? Sir, can you go just behind the first slide for a moment, sir? Okay, beta. I will go to the first slide. You want to ask something from there? Nothing, sir. Just I take a screen shot for noting down some Okay, I will go. I will go back. I will go back. Can you see the first slide now? Thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You can go now, sir. You can go ahead, please. Right, Peta. Now, Peta, when I ask you for doubts, then if you want, you can take a screenshot that time and keep it. Huh? So, you will not have to go back again and again. Right? Okay, sir. Okay. 
ओके बेटा सो शेल वी मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड नाउ यस सर वेरी गुड वी हैव अंडरस्टूड ग्रेट सर्कल एंड ए स्मॉल सर्कल लेट्स मूव आइट now we move on to the concept of a spherical triangle we are familiar with plane triangles we use them very often in our calculations now we are going to understand what is a spherical triangle we have the diagram on the screen a spherical triangle is a triangle on the surface of a sphere formed by the intersection of three great circles now as you can see in this particular diagram uh, we have a triangle being formed on the surface of a sphere this is a 3d uh, diagram and you can see this triangle being formed a b c now this triangle is being formed on the surface of a sphere that's number one requirement for a spherical triangle and second all the three sides of this triangle you can see side ab it is an arc of a great circle the second side bc is also an arc of a great circle and the third side ac is also an arc of a great circles all the three sides of the triangle should be the arcs of great circles so that's a mandatory condition to be fulfilled for a spherical triangle if any one of the sides is not the part of a great circle or you can say if any one of the sides is the part of or arc of a small circle in that case the triangle is not a spherical triangle for a triangle to be cos all these six parts that is the three angles of the spherical triangle like in this case angle a b and c as well as the three sides of the spherical triangle you can see these three sides ab it is also represented as small c then bc it can also be represented as small a and the third side ac which can also be represented as small b the side is either represented by the vertices which connect to form that side like for this particular side we can call it as ac or you can also call it the small letter of the angle opposite to it now the angle opposite to this side is angle b so you can also represent this side with small letter b so in a spherical triangle all these six parts that is the three angles as well as the three sides are measured in units of angles only we do not measure the sides of the spherical triangle in units of length they are all measured as angles now a doubt can arise in your mind that it is understood that angles are measured in angular units so we can measure angle a b and c in the angular units of degrees and minutes but how do we measure the side of a spherical triangle in degrees and minutes now for to understand that for easy understanding the magnitude of the side of a spherical triangle is basically the angle subtended by it at the center of the sphere so let's take for example side ab you can see this is side ab now if i join a with the center of the sphere here and i join b with the center of the sphere now both these lines joining a and b with the center of the sphere make a angle at the center now this angle is basically 
the measurement of this particular side of the spherical triangle. So, repeating again, the magnitude of the side of a spherical triangle is the angle subtended by it at the center of the sphere. So, beta, uh, any doubts which are coming in your mind, you can ask me now. Sir, basically, so that means even the sides are also angles only, uh, but the sides are the angles which are sub uh, subtended by it at the center of the sphere, and the actual angles of the triangle are the angles between the sides on the spheres, on the surface of the sphere. That's right, beta. That's right. Okay. Right, beta. Great. So, shall we move ahead, beta? Chale aage? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good, beta. Great. Let's go. Okay, uh, having understood the concept of uh, a great circle, a small circle, and a spherical triangle, now let's go into our first very important formula used in spherical trigonometry, that is the cosine formula. Now this formula is uh, not only used for uh, great circle shading, but uh, also used at many, many places in celestial navigation as well. So this is very, very important for the full navigation part. Now for this, uh, let me make a, a rough diagram for a spherical triangle. You can see one side of the spherical triangle. Now we know all the sides of the spherical triangle are arcs of the great circle. So let me mark it as AGC. You can see the second side of the spherical triangle now in uh, green color. This is also the arc of a great circle. Let's mark the third one now. You can see the third side of the spherical triangle, which is again an arc of a great circle circle. Uh, let's uh, give it a name also. Let's mark one of the vertices as P. Let's mark the second vertex as A and the third one as B. So, Papa Alpha Bravo, PAB triangle is a spherical triangle. That means it is made on the surface of a sphere and all three sides of this triangle are arcs of great circles. Now the cosine formula uh, says cos of any angle of a spherical triangle is equal to cos of opposite side minus cos of adjacent side 1 multiplied by cos of adjacent side 2 whole divided by sine of adjacent side 1 multiplied by sine of adjacent side 2. Now, what do we mean by the opposite side and the adjacent side? Let's try to understand. Let us consider any one angle of this triangle. Let's consider angle P. Now, you will see there are two sides of this triangle which are making this particular angle. In this case, angle P is being made by the side Papa Alpha. P A and Papa Bravo P B. Now these two sides which make this particular angle are known as adjacent sides. The third side which is not in any way involved in making this angle 
In our case, this is side AB, alpha bravo. This side is known as the opposite side. So this is how we explain the adjacent sides and the opposite sides. Uh, you can see that in this uh, formula, the cosine formula, on the left hand side, we can have any angle. In our case, angle papa, angle alpha or angle bravo. And on the right hand side, you see all the terms are related to the sides of the triangle. So you have opposite side, then adjacent side, adjacent side, again adjacent side and adjacent side in the denominator. So it tells us that if we have all the three sides of this triangle available to us, we can calculate any of the angles of this spherical triangle. Now let's try to understand the application of the formula uh, for a particular angle. Let's consider angle P only. So we will try to apply this formula considering angle P. So the formula says cos of any angle. In our case, it will be angle P now. You can see this angle P marked here in the diagram. So the cosine formula once applied to angle P will give us cos of angle P is equal to cos of AB. You can see AB is the opposite side to this angle P minus cos of PA. You can see PA is the first adjacent side multiplied by cos of PB. You can see PB, Papa Bravo, is the second adjacent side to this particular angle. Whole divided by sine of PA, that is adjacent side 1, multiplied by sine of PB, that is adjacent side 2. So cos of any angle is equal to cos of opposite side minus cos of adjacent side 1 multiplied by cos of adjacent side 2 whole divided by sine of adjacent side 1 multiplied by sine of adjacent side 2. So that is the application of the cosine formula. We can apply this to any of the angles as required by us as we have done for angle P. So better now you can have a good look at the formula and let me know any doubts which are coming in your mind one by one. Excuse me, sir. Go ahead, Peter. Uh, sir, could you repeat one more time, sir, because I have some lost connection in between that. So just quickly, one time, you just repeat it. Okay, Peter. Okay. Peter, just do a job. आप इसको रीड करो और जहां भी आपको डाउट आ रहा है प्लीज आस्क मी ओके सर जहां पे भी आपको डाउट आ रहा है वन वर्ड हियर सर कॉस एनी एंगल इक्वल टू कॉस अपोजिट साइड देयर इज आई लॉस्ट कनेक्शन सर ओके नो प्रॉब्लम ओके नो प्रॉब्लम कॉस ऑफ एनी एंगल इज इक्वल टू कॉस ऑफ अपोजिट साइड minus cos of adjacent side 1 multiplied by cos of adjacent side 2 divided by sine of adjacent side 1 multiplied by sine of adjacent side 2. This is formula hai, ye humne angle P ke liye yahan pe apply bhi kiya hai. So, you can see application and if you have any doubt application, why is this doubt here? 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 You can ओके सर सर ये जो हमको आएगा क्वेश्चन में ये फार्मूला हमको यूज करना है कि मतलब क्या इसका एप्लीकेशन क्या यूज करना होगा सर मैं बताऊंगा आपको बेटा मैं बताऊंगा आपको इसे कैसे यूज करना है अभी के लिए आपको फार्मूला देखना है और इसको मेमोराइज करना है ये फार्मूला आपको याद होना चाहिए सो अभी के लिए इतना करो क्वेश्चन में मैं बताऊंगा ये कैसे यूज होगा ठीक है सर ठीक है थैंक यू सर यू कैन गो अहेड सर ओके okay, बेटा 
सो इफ यू आर कंफर्टेबल चले बेटा आगे वेरी गुड बेटा लेट्स गो now let's try to go a little deeper into the formula and try to understand what are the situations scenarios or questions in which this cosine formula can be used uh, there are specific conditions in which uh, we can use the cosine formula we have the spherical triangle rough diagram here same papa alpha bravo triangle now this cosine formula can be used in two conditions or two scenarios what are these two conditions number 1 is when all the three sides of this spherical triangle are known to us papa alpha papa bravo and alpha bravo all three sides are known to us then we can apply this cosine formula and we can calculate all the remaining angles of this triangle angle papa angle alpha angle bravo all three can be easily calculated we just saw in the formula itself on the right hand side we have all the sides so having all the sides known to us any of the angles can be found out now the second uh, condition or scenario in which cosine formula can be applied is when we know any two sides of the spherical triangle and very very important included angle known to us what do we mean by the included angle if any two sides of this triangle are known to us let us say we know papa alpha the green color side of the triangle we know papa bravo that is the blue color side of the triangle and the included angle the included angle between these two sides is the angle p angle papa so in this case also two sides known to us and the included angle known to us cosine formula can be applied now when we apply the cosine formula the first thing which we will be able to calculate or find out in this triangle is the missing side the unknown side in this case the side ap alpha bravo now once the missing side has been known has been calculated then we again have access to all the three sides of the triangle and the remaining two angles that is angle alpha and angle bravo can also be calculated and found out now important thing to understand here is that the angle which you know should always be the included angle if you know an angle other than the included angle then in that case cosine formula will not be applicable so to give you an example if you know side pa the green color side and side pb the blue color side and you know angle a so in this case angle a is not the included angle and we will not be able to use the cosine formula here again if angle b is known same thing happens angle b is not the included angle and we will not be able to use the cosine formula here so it is very important that we know the two sides any two sides of the triangle and the included angle for the cosine formula application now a doubt may arise in your mind that uh, in case we have two sides and a angle which is not the included angle how to proceed ahead and solve that triangle so in that case we can use or we have different methods with which it can be solved but they are not required right now as far as the great circle uh, problem is concerned so we will see what is to be done when we come to those questions for now we will always have one of these two scenarios 
Number one, when all the three sides are known to us. And number two, when any two sides and the included angle is known to us. Sir, wonder, can you repeat what is the included angle means? Okay. Okay. You can keep your mic muted now. Included angle means any two sides which you have, which you know in. Okay. So, if you are comfortable, chalein, beta. Aage chalein. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Right. Let's go. Let's now go into the second uh, important formula in spherical trigonometry. This formula is also used to solve spherical triangles, and Excuse this me, is known as Napier's rules. Go ahead, Peter. Sir, sir a break. Le le, kya? Uh, as you say, Peter, uh, if you want to take a break, we can take a break. No issues. अरे सर एक घंटे से ब्रेक ही चल रहा था अभी टाइम है दो या एग्जैक्टली वी लॉस्ट क्वाइट अ बिट ऑफ टाइम इन द बिगनिंग सो अच्छा ऐसा करते हैं बेटा इट इज हां इट्स नॉट वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड नेपियस रूल कर लेते हैं मे बी अनदर 15 मिनट्स एंड देन वी विल टेक अ ब्रेक ओके इज एवरीबॉडी ओके विद दैट ओके सर ओके सर ओके सर ओके ओके सर ओके सर ओके बेटा ओके सो दिस इज जस्ट अ रिविजन मैंने बिल्कुल जैसा आप बोल रहे थे ना कि हमें बेसिक्स भी भूल गए हैं और आपने शुरू के लेक्चर्स में स्लो चलना है तो मैं बिल्कुल स्लो चल रहा हूँ और बेसिक्स आपको कवर करवा रहा हूँ दिस वॉट वी आर डूइंग नाउ इज बेसिकली डन इन प्री सी ओके सो वी विल कम्प्लीट द नीपियर रूल एंड देन वील टेक ए ब्रेक ओके now these napier's rules are applicable to special spherical triangle what is the speciality in the spherical triangle the speciality could be either a 90 degree side or a 90 degree angle as uh, you see in the diagram we have a triangle pab and in this triangle the red side the side ab is a 90 degree side now we are aware that in a spherical triangle the angles as well as the sides are measured in angular units so if any one of the sides of a spherical triangle is 90 degrees then it is known as a quadrilateral uh, triangle and uh, napier's rule can be applied to it A 90 degree side is represented by making a rectangle in this particular way. So whenever you see a diagram of a spherical triangle with any one of the sides having this rectangle, it tells you that this is a quadrilateral spherical triangle or a spherical triangle whose side is 90 degrees. The second speciality could be a 90 degree angle. so again we have a a spherical triangle pab at the bottom part of the slide and you can see that in this spherical triangle the angle b which we have is a right angle so if any spherical triangle has this speciality of 90 degrees either it has a 90 degree side or it has a 90 degree angle then we can apply the napier's rule to that particular triangle so up to here clear beta yes sir isko kya bolte hai quadrant yeah, right yeah. angle triangle right sir uh, 90 degree angle ho to use bolte hain beta right angled triangle aur agar 90 degree side ho तो उसे हम राइट साइडेड ट्रायंगल भी बोलते हैं और क्वाड्रेंटल ट्रायंगल भी बोलते हैं ओके ओके ग्रेट सो मूविंग अहेड नाउ
Let's now see the application of the Napier's rule. First, we will see the application of Napier's rule in a spherical triangle having a right angle or having a 90 degree angle. Now we have the PAB triangle on the screen and we can see that uh, angle B of this triangle is a 90 degree angle. Now to apply the Napier's rule, we first make a circular diagram and uh, this circular diagram is known as a cartwheel. So first of all, to make that diagram, we draw a circle. You can see the circle on the screen now and uh, we make a cross in that circle in this particular way. You see one line and the second line. Now from the center of the circle, we draw a vertically upward line. So with this, you see the circle is divided into five parts. So there are total five parts in this circle. Now what we do is, in the bottom three parts, the bottom three parts of the cartwheel, we write down 90 degrees minus, 90 degrees minus, 90 degree minus. So in the bottom three parts, which are the bigger parts, we write down these values of 90 degree minus. Now, uh, we identify the right angle in the PAB triangle. In this particular example, we have angle P as our right angle. And this 90 degree angle is written on top of our cartwheel. So we have the angle P marked at the top of the cartwheel now. After this, what we do is from the 90 degree part, in this case, angle P, we start to move clockwise in our triangle. So our triangle, the PAB triangle has total six parts. There are three sides and three angles of this triangle. So from the right angle, which is angle B in this case, we move clockwise in the triangle. Now when we move clockwise, you can see the clockwise direction being shown by the laser pointer. When we move clockwise, the next part of the triangle which comes after angle B is the side AB, the red color side. So what we do now is we start to move clockwise in the circular diagram in the cartwheel also and we fill up these parts in the different sectors or different segments of the cartwheel. So from the B part in our cartwheel, we move clockwise and the next part which we have, we fill up the part of the triangle which is side AP. So going clockwise from B, the first part which comes as AB, going clockwise from B in the cartwheel, the first part is filled up as AB. Now after AB, the next part in the triangle which comes is angle A. Angle A is the next part. Now when we go to the cartwheel clockwise after AB, in this next part we have to fill up angle A. So we have already written 90 minus. Now behind this, after this 90 minus, we write the angle A. This is how the second part is filled up. Now moving further clockwise, we have the green color side of the triangle that is PA. Moving further in the cartwheel, we have already written 90 degrees minus and here we fill up the part PA. Coming back to the triangle, after side PA, we have angle P in the triangle and moving further clockwise in our cartwheel in the next part, we have 90 degree minus already written and we fill up this angle P after 90 minus. So this part becomes 90 degrees minus P. Moving further clockwise, we have side PB of the spherical triangle, the blue color side. And moving further clockwise in the cartwheel, we have this part which is remaining now. And we fill up the side PB in this particular part. 
going back to the triangle after side pb we reach back to the right angle b angle bravo and you will see that in the cartwheel also once we fill up these parts we reach back to angle b this is how the cartwheel is filled up so from the right angle we start to move clockwise first part is ab next part is angle a next part is side pa then angle p and in the end pb we fill up all these parts in the cartwheel going clockwise so you go clockwise from b the first part which comes as ab is filled up here the next part which comes as angle a is filled up here in the second part the next part which comes is side pa filled up in the third part of the cartwheel next part which comes is angle p and the next one p b coming back to bravo so this is how the cartwheel is filled up now once the cartwheel is filled up we can apply the napier's formula now what is this uh, napier formula let's see uh, there are two formula in the napier's rule which are used in the napier's rule the first one is sin of the middle part is equal to tangent of adjacent part 1 multiplied by tangent of adjacent part 2 this is the first formula to be used and the second formula is sin of the middle part is equal to cos of opposite part 1 multiplied by cos of opposite part 2 now these are the two formula which we use when we apply the napier rule to a particular right angled spherical triangle now these are very very important uh, formula and uh, it should be memorized well now when we look at these formula they have used the terms middle part adjacent part and opposite part so a doubt arises in our mind what is this middle part what is a adjacent part and what is a opposite part uh, we will see the application of the napier's rule now in the uh, coming slides and then these middle adjacent and opposite parts fundamental will become clear in your mind now uh, the basic philosophy in the napier's rule application is that if you have a special spherical triangle means one of the parts is 90 degrees either a angle or a side napier rule allows us to calculate any part of that particular triangle if we know any two parts of the spherical triangle other than the 90 degree part i will repeat once again in a special spherical triangle if you know any two parts it could be two sides it could be two angles it could be one side and one angle if you know any two parts in a right angled triangle you can find out any of the remaining parts using the napier's rules so this is the basic philosophy or concept behind the napier's rule now let's see the application of uh, napier's rule now a very easy way of uh, remembering the napier formula is you see on the left hand side of both these formula we have sin of the middle part so left hand side sin of the middle part is uh, quite easy to remember now on the right side you see we have tangent adjacent part 1 multiplied by tangent adjacent part 2 or in the second case we have cos opposite part 1 multiplied by cos opposite part 2 to remember it easily to memorize it easily you remember that tangent and adjacent they are rhyming words they both have the same tone
tangent and adjacent they always go together and cos and opposite they both have the sound of o cos and opposite they always go together if you remember it this way you are never going to forget it tangent and adjacent they go together cos and opposite they go together so depending on which formula you are using depending on which parts are available to you if adjacent parts are available you know i have to use the tangent formula if opposite parts are available you know i have to use the cos formula a very very easy way to remember it uh, another uh, important thing to understand is that uh, we have filled up the parts going clockwise in the triangle pab we have moved clockwise in the cartwheel also now just to make you aware that if instead of clockwise somebody wishes to go anti clockwise or by mistake let us say you move anti clockwise even if you move anti clockwise the application of the napier's rule will still be accurate if you move anti clockwise in the triangle and you move anti clockwise in the cartwheel even then the application of napier's rule will not go wrong it will still be correct and accurate now in case somebody moves anti clockwise in the triangle and he moves clockwise in the cartwheel even then the application of napier's rule will be accurate and correct so to uh, put it in short the napier's rule is quite robust and uh, a little bit of uh, the uh, change in the application is uh, not going to make any difference in your answer so now we are going into the application of the napier rule uh, any doubt up to here beta no sir no sir no sir no sir great beta let's go no. let's now try to see the application of the napier's rule now by using napier rule if we know any two parts of the special triangle other than the 90 degree part then we are able to find out any other remaining part of the triangle now let's try to apply it in the pab triangle let's assume that uh, in this triangle we know two parts other than the right angle let's assume we know side pa side papa alpha is uh, known to us and uh, we also know angle p of this triangle so you see two tick marks coming up these are the the tick marked parts are the ones which are known to us and let's assume that we need to find out angle a of this triangle so you can see a question mark coming up here signifying this is the angle which we need to find out now we have to first identify these parts in the cartwheel so if you have a look in the cartwheel the side papa alpha is represented by the bottom most part of the part wheel you can see this part is 90 minus pa 90 minus papa alpha and we have assumed that this part is known to us so you see the green tick mark coming here now the second part which is known to us is angle p angle papa and in the cart wheel you see this part is having 90 minus angle p so this part is also known to us and you see a green tick mark coming here now the part which we want to find out is angle a of the triangle and in the cart wheel you see this part is the one which is having the angle a so you see a question mark coming up here signifying that this is the part which needs to be found out so we have identified the three parts in the cart wheel now out of these three parts one of the parts has to be 
signified as the middle part. Now, how do we pick up the middle part? The middle part is to be picked up in such a way that both the remaining parts, you see there are total three parts in the question now. Two parts are known to us and one part is to be calculated, is to be found out. Out of these three parts, middle part is to be picked up or selected in such a way that the remaining two parts should either be adjacent parts, both of them, or the remaining two parts should both be opposite parts. So the middle part is to be selected in such a way the remaining part should be both either adjacent parts or both of them should be opposite part. It should not happen that you pick up the middle part and one of the part becomes adjacent to it and the other part becomes opposite to it. In that case, we will not be able to apply the Napier's rule. Now, why is that so? That is so because if you have a look at the Napier's formula, you will realize that the formula either has both the adjacent part or both the opposite parts. We do not have a formula having adjacent and opposite parts, both of them in the same formula. So out of these three, let's assume that if somebody picks up 90 minus A as the middle part, if 90 minus A is the middle part, then 90 minus PA having a adjacent side to it becomes the adjacent part and 90 minus P becomes the opposite part. So we cannot apply the Napier rule here. If somebody picks up 90 minus P as the middle part, then again you see 90 minus PA becomes adjacent to it and 90 minus A becomes opposite to it. So even now we cannot use the Napier rule. One of the remaining part is becoming adjacent and the other one is becoming opposite. Now, if you keep 90 minus PA as your middle part, 90 minus PA, if it is the middle part, then 90 minus P is adjacent to it and 90 minus A is also adjacent to it. So this fits our formula. 90 minus PA is to be considered as the middle part here. Both the other parts now become adjacent parts and we can now apply the Napier's formula for adjacent part. For adjacent part, the formula which we had was sine of the middle part is equal to tangent adjacent part one multiplied by tangent adjacent part two. So this now becomes sine of 90 minus PA. 90 minus PA is considered as the middle part now equal to tangent of 90 minus P. 90 minus P is one of the adjacent parts multiplied by tangent of 90 minus A. 90 minus A is the other adjacent part. Now in this equation, 90 minus P A is known to us. You can see a green tick mark here. 90 minus P is again known to us. These parts are known. And the only unknown in the equation is 90 minus A. So using the scientific calculator, we can easily punch in the numbers and get the value of angle A from here. So this is how we apply the Napier's rule. And not only angle A, all the other remaining parts of the triangle can be calculated, can be found out using the Napier's rule. So, beta, I hope the Napier's rule application is refreshed. Any doubt coming in your mind, please ask me. Krishna, beta, your mic is having a lot of disturbance. Can you ask again your doubt, please? So, how do you find out this 90 minus A? Okay. Beta, when you know the other other parts in the equation, you can put them in the scientific calculator and scientific calculator will automatically give you 90 minus A. Okay, Thank you. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, go ahead. Sir, sir, for this 90, P minus P A, the opposite side can be P B and A B also, no? This both are opposite uh, for this 90 minus P A, right? That's right, beta. Any part which is not adjacent to a part is a opposite part. 
Okay, sir. so PB, AB both will be opposite to 90 minus. Right. That is right. That is right, Peter. Sir, in this particular question, uh, you are saying PB and PAB are knowing that, right? Uh, we know Papa Alpha side and we know angle P beta where we have put the green tick marks. Okay, sir. PV also we know, right? PV? PV is not known to us in this particular okay. question. PV is not known to us. So it can okay. be calculated now. If you want, you can calculate it. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Any more doubt, beta? No. No. Very good, beta. Great. Now let us see this for 90 degree side also. Let's go. Let's now see the application of Napier's rule for a spherical triangle having 90 degree side. This is also known as a quadrantal spherical triangle. You can see this triangle PAB on the screen, which is having a 90 degree side. The side AB of this triangle, red color side, is a 90 degree side represented by a rectangle. So let us see the application of the Napier's rule for this 90 degree side triangle. We first prepare the card field. So let's make the circle. Now in the circle, we draw the cross exactly in the same way as we did for 90 degree angle triangle. And then we draw a vertical line dividing the circle in five different parts. Now, the only difference in application of Napier's rule for a 90 degree angle and a 90 degree side is that at the bottom most part, we fill up minus 90. What do I mean by this? You see in 90 degree angle, triangle or a right angle triangle, we filled up 90 minus 90 minus and 90 minus in all the three bottom parts of the cartwheel. Now the only difference here is we take this 90 degree in the bottom part to the end and the part of the triangle which comes here in this segment will be coming in the front. The 90 degree goes to the end and the part of the triangle will be coming in front. This is the only difference in application of Napier rule for a right angled triangle and a right sided triangle. So we have filled up the bottom three parts, 90 minus, 90 minus, and the lowest part, the bottom most part, minus 90, 90 has gone to the end. Now let's note down the 90 degree part on top. So in this case, we have side AB as the 90 degree part. We write that on top of the cartwheel. Now we can start to fill up the parts of the cartwheel. Uh, starting from side AB, now we move clockwise in this particular triangle. From side AB, if we move clockwise, the first part which comes is angle A. Next is PA, then angle P, next is PB, and then angle B. Now let's move clockwise in the card wheel also and fill up these parts one by one. So we start from AB. As we go clockwise, the first part which comes is angle A filled up here in the card wheel. The next part which comes is side PA, again filled up here in the card wheel. The next part after PA which comes is angle P in the triangle. So let's fill up angle P here. As I told you that the 90 degrees in the bottom most part has gone to the end. So angle P which is the part of our triangle comes in the front. So this becomes P minus 90. This is the important thing to note in a 90 degree side triangle. And this is the only difference in application from a right angled triangle. Moving further, after angle P, the next part which we have is side PB. 
So let's fill up side PB in this segment of the cartwheel. After PB, the next part which we have is angle B. So after angle B, we come back to the 90 degree part which is side AB. So you see the cartwheel is filled up. The only difference in filling is the bottom most part. Instead of 90 minus part of the triangle, the bottom most part is now part minus 90. The formula which we have, they remain exactly the same. Sine of the middle part is equal to tangent adjacent part 1 multiplied by tangent adjacent part 2 and sine of the middle part is equal to cos opposite part 1 multiplied by cos opposite part 2. So formula remains the same. There is no change in the formula. So is it clear better for 90 degree side? The application is clear? Clear. Yeah. Okay, beta. Great. Now the formulas have remain the same. The, sir, have you changed the slide or you are on the same right angle spherical triangle side? Uh, beta, this is right sided one. Uh, isse pehle wali right angled thi. Isme to right side hai. 90 degree side hai. Okay, sir. Actually, this screen actually I think it's got stuck. It's not moving. I think on my PC. Okay. What about others, beta? Can you see 90 degree side slide? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, everything is okay. Okay. So, Gursevak, maybe the, the net speed low in your area somewhere. Yeah, okay, maybe. Sir, in this uh, right uh, side spherical triangle, only the bottom part, uh, 90 minus PA, instead of that, it should be side minus 90, right? That's right, beta. Part minus 90. It could be side, it could be angle. 90 goes to the angle. Okay, okay. And, uh, rest all will be the same, everything. That's right, beta. Rest everything remains the same, exactly same. Okay, okay. sir. I will disconnect and then connect again uh, if possible. Yes, you can do that, beta. You can do that. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any more doubt, beta? Up to here? No, sir. No. Okay, beta. Great. So, जो लोग बोल रहे थे बेटा, they are getting out of touch, सब भूल गया है, अब सब याद आ रहा है? Uh, yes, sir, आ रहा है. Yes, very good, बेटा, very good. Sir, I intentionally, हाँ, uh, बोलो बेटा. Just confirm. Uh, in this quadrature triangle thing, uh, the same thing is applicable like the last one that if you are moving clockwise or anti-clockwise, the Napier rule is going to stand correct for all the cases, right? That's right, Peta. You can go clockwise or anti-clockwise as per your choice. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, for not to get confused, we can keep it as to go clockwise all the time, sir. That's right, Peta. You keep it as clockwise. There is no confusion then. Go clockwise in the triangle. Go clockwise in the cartwheel. Everything will be correct. Okay, sir. Okay, Peta. Great. So we can take a break now. We have done the basics. Spherical trigonometry is uh, refreshed in our mind. So we can take a break now. It's about 19.25. Let's take a 10 minutes break. Let's meet back at 35. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. So okay. be back at 35. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.